Okay, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. This week, I want to get a project done that's been sitting on the back burner for a little while. What you have here on my left and on my right are, is my uh, 1941 Witty CD 12 horsepower 8,000 watt generator set. So this is a single cylinder Witty 12 horsepower engine. This is the base, the generator, and the cart that I made for it. It's partially disassembled now for a couple different reasons. We'll go into that in a second. But today I really want to get it put back together, fueled up, and test ran with some load. Make sure it's good to go if we ever get a show uh, to go to this season. So let's get to it. Okay, let's take a little walk around the unit. And I want to give you a little backstory on this thing. So I bought the gen set, I think it was 2013 or 2014. And it sat around for about a year before I got to it. And once I finally started working on it, I uh, went through the engine. The engine itself didn't need a whole lot of work, just a little fuel system work, a um, little bit of valve work, nothing too crazy. Uh, the generator itself needed new slip rings. Uh, one of the brushes had actually uh, twisted in its holder and gouged into one of the slip rings. So the, the, the generator end got some work, but it was pretty in pretty good shape overall. Um, I cleaned the fuel tank as best I could, cleaned out the oil sump. Now, I built this cart that it's sitting on. The wheels are an original piece. They come off of a farm wagon that I found uh, around uh, where I used to live. But I uh, made new axles for it, made new frame rails, and uh, mounted the gen set. And I, I, I brought it to shows for about a year and a half. But around the end of the second year, I noticed that my fuel filter was becoming clogged very quickly, only after maybe an hour of running the filter had become completely clogged. So I knew there was some issue in the fuel tank. Uh, there was a lot of sediment, rust, and, and uh, things like that, and even a little bit of water. So I knew it had to come apart. Well, it sat for a while. I never really got around to it So in, until recently. So I removed the engine to access the, the fuel tank, which is this chamber, which runs all the way along the base to the back here and that's the fuel filler now initially I didn't remove the engine from the sub base so my only access for cleaning was the fuel outlet and the filler which uh, clearly I couldn't do very much so what I found when I actually removed the engine was it was fairly clean back in that direction but all up here there was a about a half inch layer of um, like sludge and rust and quite a bit of water mixed in with that and I think that that is partially my fault because the the fuel tank that the original pipe plug here which it is just a one inch pipe plug had a hole drilled in it for a vent and I'm pretty sure over the course of a couple years uh, I had a, a bit of condensation form because this is a this is a big piece of cast iron. So you can imagine that on you know cool spring nights, the whole unit would get cold soaked. It would, it would become you know just cold iron and cold fuel, and then on those warm uh, humid mornings, you would get uh, humid air moving into the tank, and it would condense on the on the top of the tank here and drip down into the sump. So that's one thing that I'm going to have to really keep an eye on is A, making sure that I replace that cap with a, 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 an actual plug instead of a vented plug when I'm in storing the unit and number two or B, um, trying to keep the tank as full as possible for storage. But it's clean now. It's just bare iron. I was going to coat it, but I was worried that if I didn't really... If I, if I didn't get this perfectly clean, I was worried that the the, gap, the fuel tank seal would peel off and cause more of a problem. So it is just bare iron. There's no loose particles anymore, and it's got a coating of WD-40 on it just so it doesn't flash rust on me. This is the oil sump. This holds about a gallon of uh, oil. There's about another gallon that's hold in the pan of the engine, and we'll go into that in a sec. So let's uh, take a look at the engine here. I'll show you the uh, data plate. It's a single cylinder, witty 12 horse engine. The serial number dates it to 1941. The engine runs at 720 RPM. The 
So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble that. I got my new gasket made over here. So put some sealer on that. This is the fuel filter I was I'm going to be using or I was using. It's a little, I forget what the model is, it's a little Raycor filter, and I'm using a 2 micron element to try to protect the uh, plunger, or the pump plunger and the injector as best as I can. So let's go ahead and get started. That wasn't too bad. Okay, well I've kind of jumped ahead here. So, the engine's all torqued down. I reinstalled the oil filter, the drain plug, the, the oil feed line which runs from the filter housing there to the gear pump which is behind the flywheel. I've uh, reinstalled the fuel valve there and the two fuel lines, the Raycor fuel filter housing has been cleaned out, reinstalled, cleaned out the sediment bowl for the mechanical fuel pump, and, and the, I'm in the process of cleaning out the fuel filter bowl, this is the original fuel filter, so I'll show you what the element looks like, it's the same thing as the oil filter, but this is just a cast iron bowl, and uh, it looks rusty in there, but there's actually like a paint on the inside of the housing. I imagine that's to prevent rust from actually forming, but it just happens to be a red paint. So let's take a look at the fuel filter element itself. These are neat. Uh, the first time I ever saw one of these filters was actually on a similar uh, witty gen set. So what you have here is a stack of brass discs right here, and then you've got a stack of little brass almost shims they're about can you see them these little these little pieces here are about two thousandths thick right and they're on a a square uh, bar I don't know if you can tell but the bar that they're sitting on is square and they s separate these brass discs by you know approximately two thousandths and that gap is your fuel filter, actually your filtering action. Now these have a neat feature when they become plugged, a little bit difficult to do with one hand, but you rotate this T-handle up top, and I'm going to try to do that here, and you can see that those discs actually rotate as well. Actually that, that whole central stack there rotates, but the little shims here stay stationary and they actually comb the particulate out from b between the discs. And like I said, this is uh, you know, a 1941 built engine, but this technology is 20 years older than that. So by, uh, you know, by the 40s, we had some pretty advanced diesel technology, but this is kind of a throwback, even for 1941. All right, let's keep going. 
All right, well, I'm getting ready to fill it with oil. Got the crank handle on it here. I pulled the crankcase cover off just for an inspection, and I thought I'd uh, take, uh, take you guys for a little tour here. So right now you're looking at the crankshaft counterweights. I'm gonna rotate the engine a little bit, bring up the connecting rod bearing. It's a bronze type bearing with shims to set the clearance. Some pretty beefy components in there. The crankshaft rides on taper roller bearings, you can see them there. And over here, you can see we got the camshaft gear, all spur gears, no helical stuff in here. And the governor hiding down the bottom. Now, you can probably see that uh, little lip down there. So, this is what I call the oil pan right below the crankshaft holds about a gallon of oil and the oil pump just brings the oil up from the sump which you saw earlier and it dribbles the oil on the bearings the uh, the roller bearings and there's a little dipper let me see if you right down there which flings the oil around kind of scoops it up out of the pan and flings it around and as the oil level rises up and overflows that lip down there it just spills over back to the sump so pretty simple oiling system works well I'm gonna put some oil in it we'll throw the crankcase cover back on and I think we'll be ready to prime the fuel system all right well the day is almost over and I think it's time to start her up for the first time in probably about a year and a half got her primed up I have the uh, rocker arms and the injection pump lubed up got the cooling tank filled with water and this is the uh, the load panel that uh, originally came with this unit now I repainted this so that was that, that has been restored but these are the original meters and the original voltage adjust rheostat and the original disconnect with the uh, with the witty engine works tag on it so again, this is 8,000 watt, 120, 240, single phase. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up now. I'm going to cheat a little bit, since it hasn't been started in such a long time. I'm going to throw a little bit of oil down the intake valve, just to help the, uh, the rings seal a little bit, maybe boost my compression a little bit, just to make for an easier start. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, let's do this. Set the compression release.
right, she's running. with my fuel pump. Either that or I'm sucking air somewhere. I might have to put a shim under that one wheel. See my driveway, my concrete here is not perfectly level. Let's throw a little bit of load on it real quick. Oh, disconnect's not closed. That's better. Hey, right, taking a little bit of load there. I don't want to go too crazy. It's been a while since she's been run. Yeah, I'm definitely sucking air somewhere. That's annoying. a little bit of while with, with that load, let it warm up a little bit, and we'll start adding more load. This big thing takes forever to heat up. Might have tensioned my belt a little bit too. This engine really will have, will never have a lot of oil pressure because it's an open system. The oil just kind of spills out over the main bearings and trickles back down to the crankcase, down to the sump. So there's really not much pressure to be built. But that gauge at least tells you that the oil's flowing. Put a little bit more load on her. It's an 8,000 watt generator after all. You can really hear the difference. That's 50% load. Let me drop that load all in one step. And we'll put it back on, one step. Now the governor on this engine is a bit worn. The linkage is worn is what I mean. So she does have a bit of droop. But it's a good runner for shows, so I'm not really gonna worry about it.
interesting to me that they have the uh, the voltmeter here only reading one line to neutral instead of line to line. And one of my ammeters appears to be stuck or not working. This one works. They both worked uh, two years ago. I don't know why that one's not working. Hmm, I'll have to investigate that. How's my fuel situation doing? Huh. You know, I went and I tightened the, the fitting here, the outlet of the uh, fuel bowl of the Raycor filter, and that seemed to stop it. That flare must have been a little, must not have been seated all the way. All right, let's put, uh, let's put another 2,000 watts on it. Yeah, she's starting to slow down. Frequency dropped quite a bit. Voltage dropped too. Yeah. I don't think she's quite ready for 75% load. admit this engine is pretty well worn out. But really I think it's that governing system. I really need to get all the uh, the backlash and the slop out of the linkage. See if we built any heat yet. Yeah, maybe a little bit. The outlet pipe is warm to the touch. Let's cycle that load again. No load. And 50% load. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not 100% perfect. But it's a good piece for the shows.
that exhaust has uh, quite the report, huh? Alrighty. Let's shut her down for the day. It's getting late. goes down. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.